So it's very important to be able to provide opportunities for education, and in particular, higher education for refugees. Um, there are a couple of reasons for this. One is that you end up with a situation where an entire generation of young people hasn't had access to formal education. That means that they haven't been exposed to more of the world, they haven't been able to get out and kind of think broadly. It also means that they're really poorly prepared for future careers, right? You end up with a whole group of people who have very limited abilities to integrate into societies where they live, engage in rebuilding if they get to go home again, or kind of become productive for themselves and for their family members. It really has to be a multi-stakeholder effort to make sure that refugees have access to education. For some people who are refugees, all they really need is a scholarship, right? And that can be provided by individual universities, either in the country of first reception or in other third-party receiving countries, right? But other students are going to need more support, either because of personal trauma they've undergone or because they come from disenfranchised places in their home country, and so will need more support to be able to access higher education. So I think the best programs are those that take advantage of what's existing on the ground. So our project is working with the American University in Beirut, which is one of the best universities in the Arab world, um, to take advantage of what they know on the ground, and also to work with non-academic partners who understand the conditions for refugees. So some of the most successful programs about this work with the UN, work with NGOs, um, and we're following that model as well because you need to be able to get a whole picture of where your students are to be able to meet them there and bring them to where you want them to go. Education is essential to rebuilding because you can very easily end up with a system where the only people who had access to education after a conflict are the children of the people who've been waging that conflict um, and the children of elites who were able to be sent to be educated abroad during the war. Um, and that produces a situation where you end up with a very limited elite who's capable of taking on leadership after a transition. Um, and frequently this leads to perverse consequences down the road. And so broadening access to education for a whole wide range of refugees and conflict-afflicted populations really makes a difference because it means you can pull from a bigger range of people. And we also think we're making a particular contribution to peace building in the region because we're educating people in community mobilization and community organizing, which means basic participatory everyday democratic practices through which people make up their minds about what they should do, work collaboratively, and, and design things that are in their own best interest. And particularly in a context where governments have always pitted people against each other, which is true in a huge part of the world, but particularly in the contemporary Middle East, and working in a context where people's experience of working with others has been informing on each other or having to hide any cooperation from each other or being kind of every person for themselves, getting a group of diverse students together, putting them in a classroom and showing them what can happen if you work together and if you follow these participatory processes creates the seeds for a new generation of leaders who will have new experiences, new capabilities, and will be able to run programs that will help the society rebuild in more democratic and effective ways. So there are a lot of things that you, as an ordinary person, can do to help support refugee education. Um, first of all, if you live someplace where refugees are being resettled, figure out what opportunities are available for volunteering locally. Um, very much any approach to refugee issues is going to require multi-location engagement, right? Which means that if you're in a North American or European city where people are being resettled, Figure out what the resettlement organizations in your town are doing. I know they need folks to go volunteer in youth programs. I know they need people to do college counseling. I know they need people to do English teaching, right? So all of these opportunities are available to you. If you'd like to participate in something at more of a distance, so for instance, uh, there's an NGO, Jusur, by a bunch of uh, Syrian expatriates that's helping connect uh, mentors to Syrian refugee students who are looking to go to undergraduate and graduate school in other countries, right? So if you wanted to act as a mentor to someone, that's an opportunity available to you. But then specifically our project, we need 
resources and we need support from people in terms of attention, sharing our issues, and of course donations. Right? Running a program like the one we're running is going to involve a huge commitment of staff, of time, and of funds to direct towards our students. So we would love volunteers, particularly for people located either in Beirut, elsewhere in Lebanon, or folks located here in Canada. And we would also welcome donations uh, because this is a big project with a big price tag to do it right. I think what's really important is to realize that refugee crises don't start mattering when they show up on our doorstep. I am shocked and saddened every time I hear people talking about the refugee crisis as if it started in September 2015 when there have been refugees and migrants fleeing desperate situations drowning on the Mediterranean for decades and when the civil war in Syria has been going on since uh, 2011, right? So that these desperate flows of people are nothing new. And I think we need to realize that those of us in the West who are just now getting wise to this issue, we're behind the curve, right? And we have a lot of catching up to do in order to meaningfully and justly address the situation of refugees. So I think it's important that we figure out where we can intervene locally, globally, to support refugee pro refugees, to support the initiatives coming out of conflict-affected communities, and to make sure that everybody has access to education, that everyone has access to health care and food and shelter, and the support and empowerment they need to lead dignified lives.